Welcome to Southern California. We're in Orange County, Anaheim to be precise, home of the Angels, the Cinderella American League wildcard entry, which upset the Yankees in the first round of the playoffs. It's also the land of the Magic Kingdom, Disneyland, but nothing Mickey Mouse about this fight card as our month-long festival of fisticuffs continues. Tonight, we're pleased to present a pair of world championship showdowns from the West Coast. In our main event, Mexican standout Antonio Margarito puts his WBO welterweight title on the line as he takes on number three WBO contender and Southern California favorite Danny Perez in a rematch of a close encounter won by Margarito back in 1999. And in our co-feature, a battle of undefeated little hands of steel. 31-0 Eric Burrell, the pride of Madison, Wisconsin, by way of San Juan, Puerto Rico, will risk his WBA flyweight crown against 20-0 Denkausen Kowichit, the number one mandatory WBA contender out of Thailand. We bring you inside of the beautiful Arrowhead Pond, the home of hockey's Anaheim Mighty Ducks. This evening we trade hockey pucks for boxing gloves in what locals are proclaiming as the biggest ring roundup ever to hit this arena. A world championship doubleheader is coming your way. It's fight night in Anaheim. Hello again, everybody. Steve Albert ringside from the Golden State. Well, it's a catch-22 that dates back 100 years. To become a star, you have to beat a star. But how do you beat a star when none of the stars will fight you? Overshadowed by Vernon Forrest and Shane Mosley, the relentless and no-quit Antonio Margarito is viewed by the big-name welterweights as high-risk, low-reward. As a result, the world titleist is forced to defend against the likes of Danny Perez, a dangerous contender he's already beaten. More than three years ago, Antonio Margarito and Danny Perez met in a spirited eight-rounder in Indio, California. Perez scored a knockdown of the first round, but Margarito rebounded and grew stronger as the night progressed, ultimately winning by split decision. A huge difference tonight with a world title at stake. And with that, let me bring on my ringside partner, former world champion Bobby Chez. And Bobby, how frustrating is it for Margarito to be fighting a rematch like this? Well, Steve, considering that Antonio Margarito wants to become a big player at 147 pounds, wants to be considered one of the premier fighters up there, I think it has to be somewhat frustrating at the very least. The big fighters don't want to fight him, and the smaller fighters moving up. The risk-to-reward ratio is just not there. He's a tough fighter. He's got a great chin, throws a lot of punches, always in excellent shape. And, again, he's tough and can punch. He's never an easy fight. Nobody wants to fight him. That's got to be an awkward place to be. Well, where would you rank Margarito among the, the champions in the welterweight division? Well, it's no secret, after beating Sugar Shane Mosley twice, Vernon Forrest gets the number one slot. Right behind him, I do like Ricardo Mayorga, so slipping into third spot, I like Antonio Margarito. The jury is still out right now on Michelle Picciarillo, the Italian champion, but we just don't know what kind of commodity he is. Right now, though, Sugar Shane Mosley could probably still be all of the champions, with the exception of Vernon Forrest, so to become a big part of that division, sit on top, Antonio Margarito's got a lot of work ahead of him. All right, Bobby, before we get to Antonio Margarito's first defense of the WBO welterweight title, the fighter called Little Hands of Steel will return to the ring following the longest layoff of his career, which is nine months. As we look in on Eric Burrell, who will defend his WBA flyweight title in our opening bout, history suggests that it's all but impossible for an American 112-pounder to be anything more than a flyweight on the wall. But Burrell has reigned as a world champion for more than two years. Roadblocks, some self-imposed, have prevented him from rising to the next level. There have been hand injuries, arrests for alleged drunken driving, and too little evidence of Morell's nickname, Little Hands of Steel. It's all been part of Morell's unlikely journey. I was seven years old when I started boxing in Puerto Rico. I discovered that I was good at when, when I went to the uh, 1992 Junior World Champion, Championships. We moved to Wisconsin because my brother was attending to the uni uh, University of Wisconsin and that's, that's how we, uh, all my family end up in Madison, Wisconsin. It was very strange. Uh, at first it was, it was hard uh, not knowing the language, um, the, uh, the winters and all that. I mean, it was extremely hard at first. Yes, I fought in, in the uh, 1996 Olympics uh, in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, and uh, right after that, we, I mean, I turned pro. And um, I'm 31 and old right now. 
Eric Burrell still fighting to prove that on the American oh. boxing scene, a little man can make it big. At age 27, he's seemingly at the crossroads. As we close in on our co-feature undefeated, Eric Burrell set for his fourth defense of the WBA flyweight crown against unbeaten number one contender yet virtually unknown Den Kauzen Kawichit of Thailand. Already in the ring, Den Kauzen Kawichit first time of the states over 200 Muay Thai bouts. An intense form of Thai kickboxing turned pro with a 12 rounder when the Pan Asian belt his second fight 16 title defenses. He can fight, but hasn't proven himself versus world-class opposition, although reports are he's better than former junior flyweight champ Saman Sorjatarang of Thailand, a successful fighter in his own right. Bobby, he said he'll challenge Morel fist to fist and toe to toe. But can he realistically deal with Morel's experience and superior boxing skills? You know, Steve, there's no doubt about the fact that Morel has better experience and also against better competition, but it's not going to be that. It's going to boil down to styles, skills, and implementing strategies. I personally think that Morell is not only too quick and a better boxer, but he has too much power, and I think he should dominate the fight. However, Kawich has been in over 200 Muay Thai fights. That has to lend itself to his toughness, and he's been in professional ranks here 10 rounds more than twice as much as Morell. So if this fight gets late and is reasonably close, it could be real interesting. Now he is in great condition getting his first world title shot after six years fighting a dream come true, feeling the weight of an entire nation wants to win this for his beloved Thailand. And the champion, Eric Burrell, 96 U.S. Olympian, set to enter for the first time in nine long months, feels his opponent boasts of face-to-face -face combat are a ploy to distract him from his game plan. San Juan for Madison, Wisconsin at 17 to join his brother attending the university there. Has had his difficulties of late, legal problems, inactivity, trouble with his right hand, although his power punch is the left hook, and criticism for his defensive style, though I thought he forced the action and was entertaining his last fight. Bobby, should Burrell ignore the criticism, keep doing what got him here, or go for the knockouts? Steve, I'm sure the criticism is bothering Eric Morell, but I'll tell you what, I guarantee you that if he loses, it'll bother him even more. You never fix something that's working. He's undefeated, and he's a world champion. That in and of itself says an awful lot. Now, certainly he might want to make some small, subtle changes and add to his style by working harder for the knockout, but that, and that's okay. But he has to worry about one thing first, winning first, being exciting second. Well, maybe he should just change his nickname, uh, Bobby. When people hear little hands of steel, they're expecting fireworks. High expectations from the fists of this young man. Let's check the numbers as we go to the tail of the tape. A mere one-year difference in age. A three-and-a-half-inch height advantage for Morell, who also has the three-inch edge in reach. And at yesterday's weigh-in, Morell right on the mark. And Kowicz is just below. Let's check the key rules for this championship affair. There's no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. A fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round. If an accidental headbutt occurs before the end of the fourth round, the fighters rule they no decision. If it happens after the end of round four, they go to the scorecards. So here at the Arrowhead Pond of Anaheim, we are getting ready for Eric Burrell and Den Kausen Kowichit for the WBA flyweight belt, set for the formal introductions from our ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you and we welcome you to the Arrowhead Pond in Anaheim, California as we have a big night of action coming away and it's all brought to you by Top Rank Incorporated in association with Showtime and the undisputed King of Beers, Budweiser. This world title bout coming away is sanctioned by the World Boxing Association. The president, Gilberto Mendoza, Supervisor Rodolfo Fortich. This is along with the California State Athletic Commission. Our judges scoring this bout from ringside from Cartagena, Colombia, Uriel Aguilera. From Montreal, Canada, Guy Jutras. 
from Sacramento, California, Terry Smith, and our third man in the ring working in this, his 70th world title bout, Raul Caiz. All right, fans, here we go. 12 rounds of boxing for the WBA Flyweight Championship of the World. Introducing to you first the challenger on my left. He is fighting out of the blue corner. Entering the ring wearing...